Hey everybody, welcome back to DIY Boomboxes in Texas. My name is Phil, your host. And what we're working on right now, as you can see, I'm doing a, another Bluetooth cooler. And here's, I got it somewhat done right now. You can see there's the battery, the relay, and everything. But we're getting ready to hook up the booster, and that's what this video is about. So, let me move this aside. And the reason we use a booster is, uh, this is the damn goo... 100 by 100 watt amplifier and the way you get that 100 watts is you have to run it at 24 volts now i run mine at 23 volts which gives you about 95 to 96 watts per channel because i always like to have a little cushion in there not to overdrive the amp so in case there's a spike or something so i run mine at 23 volts if you run this at 12 volts you're going to get about 40 watts to channel maybe 50 if you're lucky, which is great if you're running some four inch speakers, but if you're running some kicker speakers, um, I run this at 19 to 21 volts because the RMS on the speakers is 60 to 65 watts, which is what that'll give you. And we're gonna be running the big SCAR speakers in that cooler, so we're gonna run this up to 23 uh, volts. So we're gonna show you how to set that up. So there's our amp. And uh, I will say hi real quick to Simon. You guys have met him before. This is uh, Duke's baby brother, our little cousin, and he's a, he's a handful, aren't you, Simon? Yeah, he's only 10 weeks old, so anyway, he's going to be in some future videos. I'm going to move him out of the way for right now, too. Okay, this is a booster that I use, and this is how it comes in the box. Uh, this one here is rated for 600 watts, and... I'm going to go ahead and open it up here and go ahead and use exacto knife. I got a plastic. Let me put my glasses on here so I can see what I'm doing. Now this is the one I like to use. They have a smaller one that's 250 watts, but I've had some of those burn out on me and I've had to replace them for my customers. So I prefer this one to uh, just work a little better. Now. You're going to notice on here, you've got an output side right here. It says out and input side. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in 12 volts on this side and we're going to adjust it to whatever the voltage is on this side. So let me show you what we're going to need. Um, you're going to need a power source, a 12 volt power source. Now I'm going to use a power supply because I have one handy. If you don't have one, you can go ahead and put the input side on your battery and feed it with 12 volts and then you can adjust this side over here but before we do that um, you are going to need a digital multimeter this is the one that i use now this one is auto ranging if you don't have one that's auto ranging you're probably going to want to set it um, above 20 volts some of them range from 20 to 200 and we're going to go ahead and turn that on let's see we can see our meter right there okay now we're going to pull the things off the leads. Now what I do to connect my leads here is I go ahead and use a couple of the lever nuts. And we'll go ahead and put one on the ground side. And one on the hot side. Make sure you put this on the output side. Like so. And we're going to go ahead and put our positive lead onto there like that. And we're going to put our negative lead under there. Now we need to get some power to it. So again, I have a power supply that I use. It takes in 110 volts and for you guys that live outside of the United States and Europe, you can get them that'll do 240 volts. You can just custom order them. And it puts out 12 volts on this side. So we're going to go ahead and we just lost a wire here. I need to put another ground wire in there. So I'm going to go ahead and strip this off real quick. Just a second. So I have a couple of terminals on there. Alright, let's see here. Get my little screwdriver. And go ahead and unscrew that. Those old wires out of there. New wire into the terminal and 
screw that down. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a couple more lever nuts and we're gonna go ahead and put the positive side to the positive side and the negative side to the negative side. Now you do have to just at least check it if you're not going to set it because these do come preset from the factory. I've seen them as high as 25 volts. I've seen them as low as 15 volts. So, all right, we have all that hooked up. We've got our meter here in the screen so we can see what our voltage is. Now let's go ahead and plug it in and see what our voltage is doing right now. Okay, we have 19.5 volts, as you can see right there. Now, let me get my small screwdriver. I need a very narrow screwdriver for this. And I've got a couple of them here. Let's see. Let's this one right here. Now, as you can see, we've got two terminal, two screws right here. Now, the outside one is normally going to be your amperage, and the inside one is going to be your voltage. Now we're not going to be reading the amperage so what I like to do is I go ahead and whatever how many turns I turn the voltage I'll do that many turns on the amperage. Now counterclockwise is going to raise the voltage in the amperage clockwise is going to lower it and you can see let me make sure I get this right there where you guys can see what I'm doing see this the thing there. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the inside screw up and you see the voltage going up there now for these speakers like I said these scar speakers I like to set it about 23 volts right about there a little bit over is not gonna hurt anything yeah it'll be over 22 that, that right there 23.11 is fine now let's go ahead and do a few turns counterclockwise on the amperage just a few turns and I normally just, like I said, I don't, if you have a, a meter that can read amps, that's cool. Uh, mine can in a certain way if I set it up, but I normally just play it by eye that way and it usually works. And you can see we got 23 volts. And um, that's it. Your boost is ready to go. So let's go ahead and turn everything off. So we're going to go ahead and unplug our power supply. And you see the voltage dropping as it's draining from the capacitors and turn off our meter let's go ahead and disconnect our power supply and we'll put that back away and we'll go ahead and disconnect our meter and you can go ahead and leave the lever nuts on here because that way you can wire it into your system so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put my meter back together here I got these little safety caps over the terminals. This is a real nice meter by the way. Uh, it's about $35 at Amazon. But if you don't have if you don't want one that's fancy, you can get a basic digital multimeter for less than $10 at Harbor Freight or you can order them online. You don't have to have a fancy one like I have. It's auto ranging. Just you just got to know how to use your meter. So if you're not familiar with using a meter, I'd say test it out with a battery, run some tests and educate yourself on how to use it. Uh, I'm sure there's videos on YouTube that'll show you how to use your multimeter. Uh, so I'm not gonna do that. But again, this is already set up. Now it's ready to go. The voltage is set right where we want it. Now what I like to do is I buy these rolls of industrial Velcro and what I like to do is go ahead and put a strip right there on the bottom. And I keep a pair of scissors right here on my workbench here. And Go ahead and peel off your Velcro, just like that, and then just give it a good press. Hello, Duke. Duke's over here. We might just say how to do. And then when you're ready, just peel this off and stick it where you need to stick it. And this can be mounted anywhere in your box. Just put it somewhere out of the way where it gets some good airflow, and um, run your wires to it. Now the way you're going to wire it up is um, this is going to be coming from your switch. Or preferably it'd be coming from an automotive relay. Let me show you that right there. Um, what I like to do is I like to use an automotive relay to trip my booster. And all, all this is, 
this is just an electronic switch. And uh, hello, Duke. We've got Duke in here. Um, the reason is, is you have your normal switch. I don't have one with me. Let's see, I have a switch. Yeah, I wouldn't have a switch handy, would I? Let me see, okay, here we go. Now, some of you guys have seen me use these uh, marine switches right here. And these are these are good, but the thing is, if you don't have a relay, the switch is carrying the whole load of the system. And that'll work okay, but pulling this much power, sometimes it can tend to burn out these switches. I've had them burned out before, and I've had to go ahead and put a relay in there. So the way the relay works is the relay is good for 40 amps. This is good for maybe 6 to 10 amps. And that's just a unit of power. So you run power from your battery to your relay. And you have a ground. And then you're going to have a switch wire coming from your switch to the relay. And then you're going to have a power wire or a switched wire coming from your relay to the positive side of your input on your booster. And what that's going to do is when you turn on your switch, it's going to turn on the relay. And it's going to allow the relay to give power to the booster. But again, you don't have to do this. This is just something you guys can, can check out. And there are a bunch of videos on YouTube showing you how to wire up an automotive relay. I might do it one day if you guys need me to. do really? Oh, it's crazy cat. But anyway, so that's just something for future reference. But for right now, that's the basics of wiring up your 12-volt relay. Your input side is going to be coming from your switch, whether it's a relay or your main switch. And your output is going to go to your amp. Now make sure the positive and negative of your amp go to the positive and negative terminals on the output. Over here, this, the input can go to your regular ground. And this is going to go to your switch line. It's going to switch it on and off. And so when this turns on, it's going to turn on your amplifier. So you're going to have it connected, you know, just like that. So anyway, I hope this answers the questions. I've had a lot of people ask me for an updated video on wiring up relays. And... That's it. So, of course, we got to see Mr. Duke here. He had to make himself know. <laughs> Crazy cat. I know everybody loves Duke, so Duke is here. Duke is in the building. So, thank y'all so much for watching. Hope this answers y'all's questions. If you have any questions, let me know. I got more build videos coming up. Hopefully, I'll have this uh, build up tomorrow that I'm working on right now with this relay, of course. And we'll see you next time.